let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we deal with pain each day, you walk with us. You remind us that we never face it alone. In fact, you face the ultimate pain for us. A crucifixion, something we can't even fully understand. Lord, when pain walks into our life, remind us through your presence that pain does not last, but instead through faith in you, the glory of heaven awaits. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a number of years ago, a younger son decided he was getting out of the house. He was tired of living under someone else's rules. He wanted to be completely free to determine what he did, when he wanted, and how he wanted. Now, his parents were filled with the pain of broken hearts because they were pain beyond words. When a child leaves home, it hurts. But not surprisingly, the younger son soon ran out of money, he ran out of friends, and he ran out of options. He hit rock bottom, it's not cheap to live in San Francisco, and he was at wit's end. Finally realizing how foolish he was, now this was a number of years ago, he wrote a letter, not an email or a text, he wrote a letter to his parents who lived in Omaha, Nebraska. Here's what he wrote. Dear Mom and Dad, I have caused you so much pain. I have sinned against you. I have sinned against God. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. There is no reason for you to ever welcome or want me back home. But I'm at the bottom of the barrel. I am hoping to come back home if you will take me back. I've been given a ticket for a train on Amtrak to come back to Omaha. It's that line that comes around the bend that goes past our farmhouse. If you want me to come back home, please put a white bed sheet out on the clothesline, out in the backyard, out by the tracks. That will let me know if you're willing to take me back. If there's not a sheet there, I understand that it's not right for me to come back. A few days after sending the letter home, he got on the train in San Francisco, and it's a long ride halfway across the country to Omaha. And as he got closer to home, he could feel the anxiety, the nervousness just raising up inside himself. And as that train went past Lincoln and grew closer to Omaha, he could no longer bear it. He asked the man who was sitting next to him, Sir, around the next bend there's going to be a big farmhouse on the left. And then there's a little white house with that big red barn behind it. You're going to see a beaten up fence and there's this long clothesline that's back there. Would you do me a favor? Would you please look and see if there's a white sheet hanging on the clothesline? I know it sounds odd but I cannot bear to look. The young man's heart was racing as he knew the bend was just a few miles ahead. Look, look, open your eyes, because there on the left side of the tracks was a clothesline covered in white sheets. The barn roof was covered in white sheets. The beaten up fence was covered in white sheets. There seemed to be white sheets everywhere he looked. The mother and father, who had been so badly hurt when their son left home, deeply wanted him to come back. The pain of a parent when a child is lost may be one of the most intense pains that you can experience because a love for a child will always be seared on a parent's heart. The parable of the prodigal son we've been looking at the last two Wednesdays, but tonight in particular, it really speaks about pain. The pain of a father giving his son his inheritance while he, the dad, was still alive and let him go. That left a family split apart. The pain of the older son, who was filled with resentment and anger, 
directed both at his dad and his irresponsible younger brother, he had been held hostage by his own self-righteous anger. Or how about the pain of the father who thought, I will never see my son again. Also the pain of the father when his older son then said, no way am I going into his homecoming. But here's the irony in all of this. To be compassionate as our Father in heaven is compassionate can be very painful. We're led into decisions and into situations that can be uncomfortable at best. In fact, they can be very costly. When we are led into the trenches of our human brokenness, it's similar to what theologian Henry Newman once wrote. He said, open your hands and the world will often drive in nails. Hmm. So to be compassionate, I think gives us a glimpse into the pain of the father over the reckless behavior of that younger son and the resentful behavior of the older one. Any parent can identify with this pain because they know what it means to deeply love their children. And although there are many messages in the parable of the prodigal son, there is one central truth. God's heart is filled with compassion. He wants to reach out and take you by the hand. God, in his heart, breaks open on the cross where Jesus cried these words you would never expect. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You see, the love of Jesus is reckless and it's untamed. No matter what, God's love seeks us, it searches for us, it pursues us, and it waits for us to come home. When we round that bend, it's there waiting for us. It's a love that does not let us go. There is nothing to fear. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. And what does he call for us? Come home. Knowing this heavenly love, visibly seen both in the water of baptism and in the bread and wine of our Lord's Supper, how are we called to live? How can we not practice courageous compassion, entering into the pain of the world, not going around it, but walking into it, walking with people we care about through their personal dark valleys, helping others catch a glimpse of what's around the bend at home, our victory in Jesus Christ. Does not that love defy all human logic as we risk being vulnerable, as we risk showing who we are and offering compassion to others? whether it's deserved or not. So what is this compassion and grace of God? Welcome home. The white sheets are hanging from the trees, from the homes, the fences and rooftops. Come home. Welcome home. God's house is open and a feast of victory is waiting for us all. Living Lent that is focused in Jesus means that all pain is ultimately defeated for eternity. We as people of the resurrection have a place with our God forever. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of our God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus.